All right, welcome to Lens Island. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, when you start the game, you're going to start here on the beach next to this free toolbox. And it gives you some tips on how to manage your inventory. Uh, you can see here you got your hot bar in the lower left hand corner. You got your knife, your axe, and your pick. The axe cuts down trees, and the pick is for mining ore. And the knife is for chopping down. You can see these little tufts of grass, those will give you fibers. And you can just drag out of the toolbox and drop it onto the toolbar where you want it. And then you're going to click the one, two, three, or four in order to use those tools. And you have the tools here on the right tab, and you have weapons here on the left tab. And you can see all the stats and whatnot when you hover over it. You start with a quest. Getting started, you can see here in the upper right hand corner, they want you to construct a house, place a bed, build a workbench, explore the map and visit the mayor. Let's take a look at our map. And we just got XP for completing that uh, little task there. So here's a, a dungeon or a cave. Uh, this icon is indicating that here. And each one of these playthroughs is procedurally generated, which means every playthrough is random. So what you're seeing here on my screen is not going to be exactly the same for you. So just starting out here, immediately we can see this little bush with the blue on it. Those are blueberries. They are... And then you get a little tutorial there on how to cut down these pieces of grass. But blueberries, you can see we've got a seed there too. Uh, blueberries are the big staple for managing your hunger bar. You can see this yellow bar at the bottom of the screen. The green bar is your health and the blue bar on top with the number is your experience bar. So over time you can see already we've lost a little bit of hunger here and we need to eat food in order to fill that back up and when it gets to zero we start taking damage. So I'm just gonna go along here and just cut some of this stuff and you get reed fiber. Uh, that stuff is all over the place and it, not really used for much other than making a bed that I found. Here we can see roses these are actually a pretty good cash crop once you start growing your own crops here. We got some seeds from it, and I think you can actually eat them for a little bit of health, but I wouldn't bother doing that. There should be enough blueberries around that you're able to sustain yourself on them. Next, let's test out the axe here. I've hit two to equip it, and you just click, and you swing the axe, and you chop the tree down. Now, if you watch. When you get to the back of your swing, there's a little burst of light there. That's actually a clever little mechanism in this game that helps you to manage like critical hits and combos. So just as an example here, I'm going to try it on this tree. And if you time it right, you can see that little yellow burst and you can hear that clink. That. Uh, when you time it right, you're going to hear that little clink, and what that does is it adds extra damage onto your next swing. And the more you pro the more you practice, you'll be able to pick up on this yourself. And it, like right now with the starter weapon, it only adds like a couple extra damage. And it just kind of helps you uh, cut down trees faster because the trees have health points as well. Oh, what is this? I've never seen this before. Looks like it's just decoration, a lily pad with a big flower. So here we can see a mining node. This is stone. We'll hit three to equip our pickaxe. And the same thing is true with our hand axe and our knife. If you time it right on the backswing, you get a little bit extra damage. You can see we get one extra damage here. And with these starter weapons, it takes a little bit, a little bit of time to make get through that stuff. Now here we can see the gray rock from before. This is stone. And this brown rock here is clay. They're two different materials. And every once in a while you'll get a rare drop from the clay. It's called a sapphire. And it looks like multicolored gems. So as you're wandering the beach, you're gonna it, it's easy to miss some things with all the decorations. A lot of this is just decoration. But you can see right here in front of my character, there's a little bottle. And in the lower right hand corner you can see I picked up glass. So keep your eyes out when you're walking up and down the beach for those little bottles because you'll be able you need glass in order to put windows in the walls of your house. 
there I got another one right here by my toolbox so you can build anywhere on the map but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just gonna build right here we get this nice free toolbox here I'm just gonna start building here so you click on your backpack or you can hit the tab button to open your menu and you can see a list of all your various supplies uh, here's all your seeds fruit and flowers baked goods uh, once you build a fireplace and a windmill to produce wheat you'll be able to bake pies and ramen and things like that health potions and you can also fish and you can grill fish on a campfire so we're gonna go to our building tab here and we're going to select a wooden foundation we're just going to line it up a little tutorial there from the game and we're not going to get too fancy select the wall you can uh, in the tooltip here you can see how many resources these things take so the wood foundation is 12 wood and 3 stone so let's select our wooden wall I'm going to keep this super basic okay so I'm out of wood Nope, I got my pickaxe equipped. You can see I'm dealing zero damage. Switch back to our hand axe. And you gotta watch out when you're cutting these trees down, because if they do fall on you, you will take like 12 damage. You get a little bit of XP every time you do any type of action. Cutting down trees, mining ore, chopping down these tufts of plant matter. Now we've got walls on our very primitive house. We need to make a bed. And we need more wood. We have plenty of reed fiber. Place our bed. Right back in there. Now we need to place a roof over our bed. And we'll just go with the basic wood ceiling. So we just got credit for constructing a house and placing a bed. We have to visit the mayor and build a workbench. So my basic little house, I'm gonna hit F to go into edit mode here and you can use the controls. There's a little tooltip down here that shows you how to navigate this menu. So we need to build a workbench and we can find that under the machinery and storage tab. So we need 40 wood and 12 reed fiber. Equip our knife and all this grass has reed fiber. All right, we've gathered our resources for the workbench and I'm just going to stick this in here very tightly just to get credit for the quest. So we did that. So now a bunch more stuff opened up here. Close our map out. We can build a wood pile. That's a storage box for excess wood because right now we can only hold 100 pieces of wood until we buy the expanded backpack. So once we fill up with wood, we can come drop it in the wood pile and then go get more wood. And we have a stone pile as well. It's the same thing but for stone. And you can see it costs resources to build those things. And the refinery is going to be very important at some point, but right now uh, it's out of scope for what we're doing. It takes quite a bit of resources. Uh, now we can build wood frame farm. This is basically how you plant your crops. And it takes reed fiber, wood, and clay. And if you're built inland, you're going to need this well in order to uh, water your crops. But because we've built right next to the ocean, we'll be able to fill our water can, and that works for any body of water. Now, conveniently enough, you can see it's gotten very dark and it's very hard to see. It's nighttime. So let's go click on our bed and click sleep. And that'll just flip the clock and the sun will come up and we'll be able to see again. I don't think there's any penalty for staying up all night. You can ignore sleep. The real penalty comes from the low light. You really can't see what's going on. You do get a torch, 
but we do not have access to that yet. We might have to craft it in the workbench. Yeah, so that takes coal, wood, and reed fiber. So let's take a look at our map. Looks like the town might be up here in the upper left. So let's go have a talk with the mayor. And once you get to the point where you see these walls, and you're gonna see broken down stuff, uh, basically the story of this game is that there was a, a calamity or an apocalypse and it wrecked everything, but once you get to this wall, that's gonna be your indication that you've entered the town. Bridgewater. And you're gonna find this building here and you can't miss the mayor. He's the guy in the green. And we've completed our getting started quest. So let's have a look at the notice board here. This is kind of an important thing. You can actually upgrade the town. And if you hover over the upgrade button, you can see if you have 50 reed fiber, 50 clay, 100 wood, and 100 stone, you can upgrade the town and you'll get access to a new shop, the furniture builder. Shop buy and sell amount is two times. I think this is the amount of money that the merchants have on hand. And there's an ac access to two more house plots. And what these house plots are is that you go and you build the houses there and put a bed in the house and that will allow you to invite one of these people to town and they have so this is the mayor uh, Alex is in the shop the adventure shop he's here and in my other playthrough this Kevin the fisherman he was not open for business it says he's at the inn but uh, once you upgrade the town and build a house, you're able to select who you want to come live in that town. And once that person lives in the town, they'll open up their own shop. Another important point here in town is the tailor. Looks like he's right next to the mayor. I've seen that in both my playthroughs here. And when you walk in here, you're going to be able to see this. Backpacks. It's going to cost you 50 gold. And that's pretty awesome. You're going to want to beeline this as quickly as possible. Right now we can only hold like a hundred wood or a hundred stone. This will allow you to hold twice that amount. And coins are, seem kind of rare to get, but uh, I grew a bunch of flowers and sold them to the florist that came to town and I had the money in no time. So flowers make a pretty good cash crop in my opinion. And it looks like you can actually change your the color of your clothes in this dresser here and your pants and whatnot. And every time you're wandering around the world and you see these barrels, stop what you're doing and break them open because a lot of the time there's rare resources in here like machine parts or scrap metal. This time we got blueberries, which is very handy in the absolute beginning stages of the game when you don't have any food sources. All right, so let's talk a little bit about farming now. I've gathered my materials and I can now build the wood frame farm. Just grab that and we'll rotate it with the R button and we'll just plop it down here. So now we can plant a crop and you just click on the dirt here. You're gonna see that little beam of light coming out of the dirt and that shows you can plant something in that location. We have rose seeds, two available. We can choose to plant all of them. We'll do that. You can see them sprout up. And we have some blueberry seeds that we've collected. We have four available. So we'll just throw those down as well. Now we need to water these. So we need a watering can. And we need to build that with metal shards. And I need two and I don't have any, so I'll be back when I have them. So having run around a little bit now, I've noticed that this whole starting island and the adjacent side island seem to be uniform. Uh, it's very similar to my first playthrough. So when you make your way over to the left side of your island map here, you're going to come across this darker woods and there's going to be pumpkins here. And they they make a really good upgrade to blueberries. And there we got some seeds so we can plant some. Um, this is lavender. I don't know what that's for yet, but when I was watching one of the developer diary videos on YouTube, uh, the creator of the game was playing and streaming and he said that lavender is actually pretty important so gather it every time you see it. So on our quest for this watering can we're uh, having to encounter some monsters here and just give you a quick rundown. These little glowing areas are spawn points for monsters 
So you want to just run in and kill those spawn points first to stop more monsters from spawning. And your swings are fairly sweeping so you'll hit a lot of critters at one time. And you can see there was quite a few that had spawned in there and we took quite a bit of damage. So I'm just going to hit four for my blueberries and you can see my hunger bar and my health bar are filling up. All right, we've cleared those monsters. Now we're gonna enter the cave, our first cave. In the early game, these first couple caves are really important and we can see right off the bat here, we've got some ore right next to the door. And we'll equip our pickaxe and we can see little critters running around here. So we're gonna to try to stay out of their range. And we picked up coal there. Coal is pretty important for building certain things. And it's a really good fuel source once you establish your refinery and your smelting station. And there we got our precious metal bits. Here we can see some mushrooms. We'll just, oh, we aggroed that critter. Gotta switch to my knife. And we ended up harvesting those mushrooms that were there. And if I had been smart, I'd have brought my torch so I could see a little bit better. But I think we're gonna be all right. This is a pretty basic cave. Pick up some more mushrooms. And you can see this strange disturbance here, but when you put your cursor over it, it's like a little monument. And you can click on it and you hold the left button down to activate. And you get some XP for that. And what that does is you ha there's these little keystones scattered around the map. And when you activate them, they act as a key to a bigger dungeon. And I think that's the, this cave down here. Once you uh, get the keystone on this island and the island to the right, there's one on this pinnacle up here with a pear tree. Uh, that'll be the two keys you need to open this harder dungeon down here. All right, we're back home. That turned into a little bit more of an adventure than I was anticipating. Now, here's my, I came back to finish my farming tutorial and it started raining and now you can see my plants have popped up they have been watered by the rain so I went on that whole adventure for metal shards to build my watering can and it was all for naught but anyways let's step over to our workbench and finish our original mission I'm gonna select our watering can and now we you can see we have the two iron shards needed the wood and the fibers and we'll hit craft and we can make a torch as well. I think I'm gonna do that. I hate to burn up that coal so early, but we'll do that. And we'll run over to our toolbox. And I will switch in my watering can. And it gives you a little tutorial here. You can read that at your own pace. So I hit three to equip my water can, and you can just walk right down in the water to fill it up. And you come over to your crops, and you hit the Q button, and you can see a little animation here. And this dirt would go from a light color, like this sand, to a dark watered color here that it already is because of the rain. So that's all there is to it. Let's uh, plant some pumpkins. We got three pumpkin seeds from our little adventure for our water can and yeah that's how you plant crops and grow them and now you have a sustainable food source all right let's move on to fishing so we'll go over to our workbench and we can see here we got the fishing rod available wood fibers and iron shards we'll craft that and then we'll run over to our toolbox and there's also a toolbox that comes with the workbench it's underneath here. We'll drag this down, get rid of our watering can. <clears throat> and you can fish anywhere there's water. So you just click on your fishing rod, click on the water, and you're gonna watch 
the tip of your rod for a little burst of light, just like when you're cutting down a tree. Every time you see white light, you click. When you see red, like that, you don't click. And if you pull off that little mini game successfully, you catch a fish. And we got a sardine there. And you can see those under your fishing tab. Raw sardine. So let's give that another go. We'll click on the water here. And you don't have to watch the bobber at all. You gotta watch the tip of your rod. Click. Click. Don't click. Click. Don't click. Click. And we succeeded. And that time we pulled some reed fiber out of there. So we've come across a freshwater pond here. And if you look, you can see this faint swirling right here. It's usually a little more prominent than that, but that's a school of fish. And I think the big difference between that and just regular water is you, you got a chance to get like rare spawns, like coins or scrap metal or more rare fish. So let's give this one a go. Click. Click. Don't click. Click. Don't click. 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 Don't click. Click. And that one what had a couple more steps to it. And I think that was a rare spawn. And you can see the fish we got. Raw rainbow trout. Large freshwater fish found in ponds and rivers. And I think this is actually a rare spawn. And it gives you quite a bit of health back. And I think it even gives you a buff. The swordfish I know gives you an attack buff. And the raw or the fugu, once you cook it, uh, gives you a buff as well. I don't remember exactly what it is. And eventually you'll see... If you eventually if you fish these holes enough, you'll see one cast go way farther than the other ones have. In my experience, that means that's the last cast that you're going to get out of that. And you can see there, I screwed that up because I was talking while I was trying to catch fish at the same time, but now that's actually disappeared. Now here we are at the start of a new day, and we can see our plants are glowing. When you see those gold lights coming off your crops, that means they're ready to harvest. If you just hover over them and click, you can see that they are ready to harvest, and you just click the button. You get experience in fruit and seeds and flowers. And that's all there is to it. Pumpkins take a little while longer, so we're still waiting on those. Let's plant some more flowers and more blueberries. And we're, I can see we're taking damage here because our hunger bar is empty. So I'm just going to eat some blueberries to fill that back up. Alright, so I jumped over to my main save file to show you guys how to cook fish. First, you're going to need a campfire. And you can find that under the machinery and storage tab. It takes 20 wood, 5 coal, and 15 stone. Once you have that built, you just click on it. You need a fuel source, and you need a fish to put in there. So you just click on the fuel source, and you can burn regular wood, and there's hardwood as well. Uh, I haven't gotten any of that yet, and I wouldn't suggest burning that unless you have some excess quantity of it. But there's plenty of regular wood around everywhere, and this is one of the most abundant resources. So you just throw it in there, and you can plus or minus that. And this burns rather quickly, you'll see. So you're going to need a lot of wood on hand. So we'll throw in our sardine. And we only have one. And we'll click light. And you'll, you'll see here that the squares are actually scrolling down. There's a line that's scrolling down. And the wood is burning faster than the fish is cooking. But once the fish is done cooking, it moves down here to the output. You can click on that and take it. You can see in the corner that we got it into our inventory. And the burning stops. So you don't have to worry about burning wood unless you're actually cooking some fish. So we'll throw in our swordfish here. And we'll light that up. Cook that. And 
and that completed. Let's throw in our last fish of Fugu. Click light. And I'll just close that out. You can walk away and let this, if you queue up a ton of fish and wood, you can walk away and just let that do its thing. And that's true for all machinery, refineries. And we take that. And that's how you cook fish. All right, so let's talk about skill points. You can see your blue bar here at the bottom. When that blue bar moves all the way to the right, you gain a level and you gain a skill point. You can see here we have two skill points to span. We're level two. So you click on the backpack and you click on this pencil icon tab and you can see three different skill trees. And in order to advance, you have to have spaces unlocked. So if I want anything up here in the top skill tree, I have to first buy this health upgrade. When you click on it, you can see it costs two points and you get 25 health. Me personally, I would go with this one first, extended belt. You get plus one extra hot bar slot. And that's just really useful for the amount of tools you gotta carry around and food, uh, and other things like that. So I find that to be very helpful. Another one that I think is really great is up here, full belly. Minus 25% hunger drain over time. That's pretty sweet too. And that basically just improves your food efficiency. You have to eat less often. But that's that costs three points. And it's locked behind a two-point skill vitality plus 25 increased health pool. So you actually need five skill points total to get these two. I think in the early game, in the earliest stages of the game, getting this hot bar extension now you can see we have a fifth square is just so much more useful and on my first playthrough I did get the hot bar extension and I wanted to make a beeline then for full belly but what I found was I was in a dungeon and I started facing a lot of stronger monsters and the timing was just right I just gained the base damage increase of plus five percent because I just needed a little extra firepower to fight those monsters and then I moved on to full belly. So depending on how you play the game and what you like to do and how you experience everything, you will probably find your own way to advance through this. But I would suggest that at the very least you get this hot bar extension, extended belt, and strongly consider full belly because this will just save you so much more food over a long period of time through your playthrough. So that concludes our beginner's tips slash tutorial for Lens Island. If you enjoyed that, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more.